So this class is going to be our Coding 101. It's all about getting started with REST and making some REST calls from Python and jQuery. So um, let me get back to my beginning. So I'm Amanda Whaley. I'm a community manager for DevNet. And um, if you need any of the samples or anything, you're not able to get the materials from this class, you can definitely email me directly, and I'll be able to, to get those out to you. They're all available for download when you're here on the DevNet Zone Wi-Fi. So, and we'll have links and stuff throughout the course. All right, so what are we gonna cover? This is really is Coding 101. It's really for um, the target audience of people who maybe have never used a REST API or maybe played with it a little bit, but need some um, getting started, how to jump into it, how to start working with REST and then specifically how to call REST from Python. And then um, we're also gonna look at jQuery and the next UI toolkit a little bit. So, <clears throat> who's it for? It's for new coders, it's for returning coders that maybe did stuff on other platforms, other languages a while ago and are kind of coming back to it. Um, if you are a JavaScript ninja, you've been using REST APIs for years, this is not the course for you. Go. Go do something else. Go find something else to do because you won't get a lot out of this and we don't want to waste your time. Um, but if you're curious about those and wanting to get started, then, then this is you're in the right place. All right, so one of the things that I want to put out there is that because this is a Coding 101 class, all of the sample code is written to be clear and be educational and be sample code-ish, not production or best practice or the most elegant, efficient code that you'll find. It's really written with the emphasis of, let's be really clear about what we're doing and then you guys can take it and be awesome and take it to the next level later, so, okay? Um, so if you brought your laptop and you wanna do the exercises with this as we work through, um, these are some of the things that you'll need to download. I would start with the Coding 101 zip that's got the slides and samples and some of the URLs and things in it that you'll need. Um, you'll also need Chrome, um, Postman, which is a REST client, a text editor, and then if you want to run the Python examples, you'll need Python installed on your machine. So um, we've got some people that can help with that out in the audience. So if you are coding along, you get stuck or have a problem, just raise your hand and they're going to come and help. And then also if you have a question for me, raise your hand, we've got the mic, and um, they'll bring it to you and you can ask your question because it just might be a little bit hard to hear. It's not too bad right now, crowd noise-wise, so we might be able to hear you anyway. But please make this really interactive. It's, it's supposed to be a, a hands-on interactive kind of thing. So stop me and ask questions whenever you need to, okay? All right, so a um, little bit more on the, uh, if you're doing the hands-on portion of it. Um, the learning labs, which are all of the great learning labs that are over on those computers over there. Some of you guys may have tried some. How many people have done the learning lab while they've been in DevNet Zone? Cool. So you can get to those if on DevNet Wi-Fi on your own computer too. Some of them are you can do on your own device. So that's the URL if you want to do those <clears throat> on your own device. And then these two URLs we're gonna use those to make our REST calls. Those are our demo servers that we've got set up for this particular session. So we'll be using those if you're coding along in the audience, you may wanna grab those and just put them in an easy to cut and paste text file because you'll probably be using those as we go, okay? <clears throat> those URLs are also inside of the Coding 101 zip in the Coding 101 links file. It's got those URLs in it, so. And um, for future uh, materials like this and information on all the APIs as they are officially released, you can go to developer.cisco.com. Um, that's also a great way to just to get in touch with the DevNet team. If there's something you want more information on or a particular topic you think that we need to give more information to developer on or you have some feedback, go to developercisco.com and get in touch with us through that site. And that goes directly to the team that I work on and we're here to help you guys have all the stuff you need to build great things with Cisco technology. There. <clears throat> okay, so first, uh, let's start really basic. What is a REST web service and what is a web service? Um, so a web service is at the simplest level, 
a way for two systems to communicate through a defined interface. So there's an interface that's defined, and they can talk to each other. Um, historically, there's been two major types, SOAP and REST. SOAP kind of came first. There were a lot of great web services. A lot of cool stuff was built using SOAP. But it was kind of cumbersome. It was a little bit hard to work with. Um, REST has really taken off because it's so easy to work with. And it's easy to call from any platform. You can call REST APIs super easily from mobile apps, console apps, web apps, desktop apps, in any language that you want, basically. Because it basically comes down to making an HTTP request and getting some information back. So because of the simplicity of using REST APIs, there's been this explosion of all these APIs which have really powered a lot of the cool like apps that you may have on your phone. If you have an app that pulls information and shows things from like a picture service or a social network, many, many of those have REST APIs behind them. That's how the phone is talking to the overall service in a lot of cases. Um, and then it's also spurred tons of growth with integrations between systems. All kinds of systems are talking to each other now. Developers can do mashups of really interesting things by putting all these APIs together. So it's a great topic to learn. I think once you get into it, you will find so many places where you're going to want to consume, and then maybe you will actually start architecting and, and writing REST APIs too. All right, so at the core of REST, it's great because it's such a simple concept. It's basically like, I have my third party application. Yeah. You know, I'm kind of new to the whole programming part of this, but Great, yeah. you know, with um, you know REST or some of these APIs, would I be able to make kind of like a module that I could have other people in my team go to and they can just run, they can hit a button and it'll display show commands and all that stuff for them? Um, it, you know, you're you can definitely make applications for your team and it will show things that are available through the APIs. So. If you're thinking about a particular um, feature that you want to implement, you need to look at the API docs, look at what features are there, and you'll know what kind of interaction, what kind of data you can get back and forth from it. So some you can, you can get some, from? Yeah, and then there's ways to do things that you would normally do through some command to actually do that. through. Like We're going to look at creating a policy, as an example, through this, and do it through the API. OK, thank you. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 OK. <clears throat> so the basic idea is that your third party app makes a request to the API, and the API sends some information back. That information could be data that you're going to use and display and do something with, or it could be a, hey, this, this worked, it was successful, or it didn't work, there was an error. Um, but that's really the basic concept. So the most simple example we're going to look at is, I want a list of hosts. We're going to use the APIM APIs. We're going to say, give me the list of hosts, and it returns the list of hosts. So it's a really straightforward example. So this is just a little bit more detail about that request and response. And basically, when you're working with a REST API, you have um, a URL that you are calling. That's the endpoint of the API that you're calling. And that's how we're saying that we want host. That's how we're telling it what we want. And then there's the method. And we'll talk more about this. And the method is the HTTP request method. That's get, post, put, and it tells it it's also part of telling the API what you want to do. And then <clears throat> the information is returned to the third party app, usually in JSON. How many people have used JSON before? A little bit here and there. OK, so if you think about how many people have used XML? OK, so think XML, but easier. <laughs> easier to use, easier to work with, easier to parse, easier to do stuff with. But same idea um, in a lot of ways you're, that you're getting that information back. So let's look at an example. Um, we are going to hop over to Postman, and um, getting all kinds of notifications. Okay, so how's the um, the size on this? Can you guys see that relatively okay? The font, okay, good. So um, this is a tool. It's a an app you can load up in in Chrome, and it's called Postman. I think the URL is getpostman.com. And it's a really great tool for testing REST APIs. So if you're saying, I want to use this API in my application, I need to understand the way it works. I want to get a look at the, what it does. Um, the best thing to do is get, get the documentation for that API, 
which tells you the endpoints and what kind of stuff you can do with it. Get Postman and start making some test calls so that you can see, okay, I, this is how I build up the request, this is what I get back. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. So, um, in this one you can see we've got the, our URL, the 10.10.20.1, that's our URL for our APIC-EM controller. So that's, we're gonna use APIC-EM APIs for all of our examples. So they're all gonna start with that controller address. And then um, API and then version zero and then the host, because we're trying to get the list of hosts back. And so <clears throat> you type that in, you specify what the method is that you're gonna use. A get is usually for retrieving information, read only, retrieving stuff. A post or a put is for creating or modifying data. There's also delete if you're going to delete something. Yeah. Is a web service that's running on some device. It is. So something. like this is running. This is a, a web service that's running on that APKM controller. Okay, so it <laughs> and it's be offering any web that up. service, and you're doing this HTTP call. And well, it has to be a REST web service that okay. conforms to this. And you know, then all of the powder. methods and all the stuff that gets the data is there. It's just returning it. It's returning to it, you. right? Which okay. we're going to do right now. I think it'll it'll help. Um, so we're going to push send. We're going to send the request over to the APKM controller. And now we got back JSON. So this is this is our JSON. This is our data we got back. And if you take a look at it, um, there's a top level response element, and then underneath that you have basically an array of all the hosts that came back, right? And for each element in the array, you've got all the attributes of that, like host IP and host name and all the things that you would want to find out about that host. Does that basic concept make sense? You see how that works? That's kind of the whole deal. Like, that's the main, the main concept that we're going to work with, um, is asking for this, getting back the JSON. And then we build on it and things get more, a little more complicated. So, <clears throat> We're going to do a couple more of these, and um, we're going to kind of kind of build up on that. First, I just want to go over. One other thing. Yeah. Sorry. So when you did that that get statement, it, it which. It, that information that was populated, did it pull it for something else, or was that array already populated in some database? Yeah, that's in the the database that sits behind the APIM controller that has all the network information in it. Okay, right? so the information you got looked a lot like, say, an SNMP walk. Is, is, yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm it was not, just, yeah. Confession, it's, I'm it's, not a networking person. Uh, uh, I'm a programmer. Okay. <laughs> I'm not so, a programmer, I'm okay. a networking person. Right, so that's, we'll, we'll that's work why we're together. here. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so that information was already in the database. So, yes. if we wanted to, and maybe I'm just going too far ahead, but the database would have to query whatever it was that we were trying to get that information from, and then I could do the get statement from the database. Is that what? We're, is that yeah. What we're doing? So, Bruno is going to answer that for me. Okay. He's, he's our expert. To, so, yeah. So, the, the, there's a database, and there is a service that keeps pulling all the devices right. uh, on the you know background. And you don't even see that, and it keeps up in the database as it goes. And that's how, you know, it's very fast because you don't need to go to every device because the database already is populated with that information. Right. But there is a service that, you know, at a frequency that keeps pulling out the devices so get that information. And, and the great thing about it is that you've got that layer of abstraction where you're not having to go and, like, check all those devices, right? You're, you're going to the centralized place and getting it. And it's through this really nice unified interface that gives you... So if something changes with those or the way that information is returned changes, it still gets fed up through that same interface. Your application doesn't have to change, right? Because you built to the API. So, okay, but that, you're talking about the controller, right? Um, yeah, the, the APIs that are offered up by right. the controller. But you could have some other method or some other thing, maybe a MySQL database or something. Anything that's the service there, it returns it in JSON format. Well, you have to have the API service sitting in front of it, right? I mean, right, somebody has right. to make that. But, but in this case, you're talking about the controller, but. I could have any other service. Sure, like I can make there. my 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 web app that has a database of like my favorite shoes. And if I wanted to write a REST API that says get man get list of Mandy's shoes, then it could return my list of, of shoes, right? Cool. So you can make that for whatever. And, you want. and the way that it's um, because it's so popular and growing so quick is because just like SMR, you know, there's um, standard stuff. 
it comes back in that format. It comes back in that format. You already know how. <laughs> so when you're sending it from the API, you got if you're an API that you've written, you got to send it back in that format yes. because the person that's asking for it wants to see it in that format. Exactly. Right? Okay. So right. they know I'm expecting to get back an L, you know, something the inside of my element representing the host called host IP, and I'm going to look for that and I'm going to use that. And if if you change it and change the name to something else, then you broke our interface and I'm mad at you. So. <laughs> Okay, good questions, awesome. So the main parts of a request, when you're building up a request in Postman, or when you're doing it in your application and calling it, it's the same thing, you gotta have the same parts. You have a method that's the get, post, put, delete, there's some other ones too, but those are the most common. The URL, most important, well not most important, but kind of central. Um, usually you have, to, the, one of the first things you need to know is the authentication method for the API, right? Because you're calling an API, the API service needs to recognize your application and know that you're authorized to get that information. So API authentication is, is really important. Um, there's several different types. There's basic HTTP, there's OAuth, there's many, many, many different types. There's also no authentication, which is what we're using just in our little demo thing right now. We're saying if you're on our special little demo network, it's okay, you can call it because we built it for you to be here at this event. Normally, that would not be the case, right? Of course, normally you're gonna have to worry about authentication. But since we wanted it to be for getting started, we wanted to make it easy. Um, and then custom headers, a lot of times you have to put, there's different headers that would be specified by the interface that you need to include. And then if you are doing something where you are not just retrieving data from the API, but you're going to create something or modify data, you need to send information to the API. And you put that, in the request body, and that's usually JSON or XML. And we'll do some examples like that, too. All right, so let's look at a few more examples. And um, where's my postman? Okay, so, oh, 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 no, wrong. I wanted to go one more. So what we looked at what was in the response and um, we'll look at this in more detail when we do these examples, but in the response, you get back a status code. And those are the, the, the normal HTTP status codes, 200 success, you know, 500 internal server error, blah, um, 201 created, and people can define custom ones too, right? So, but that's really important. You always wanna look at that part of your response to know, ah, was my API, was my call to this API, did, did it work or did something go wrong and I couldn't authenticate or whatever. Um, and then you get back usually some information in the request body that's either the data that you were trying to get back, like in the example we looked at, or in, um, it could just be like this one saying, yep, yeah, it was successful, we did something, it worked, and here's some IDs about what were created, something like that. Okay, now, um, we're gonna try it. Postman is what I'm using. There are lots of other clients you can use to test REST interfaces. If you like Firefox, there's a tool called REST, uh, Firefox REST Client. Um, you can do it from curl if you wanna do it from curl. Um, it's a little more cumbersome, but you can totally do all of this from, from curl if you want to. SOAP UI, which is a tool that people have used a lot for testing SOAP interfaces, they have a REST like kinda plugin that, or, or new feature that allows you to do testing with REST. And that's really great for automated testing if you're trying to really do a lot of automated testing with it. And then a lot of IDEs are building in stuff like this too. <clears throat> All right, so here's some more of the APIC-EM APIs that we're gonna use in this class kind of building things up. And if you are trying this on your laptop, try these out in Postman, take a minute you know, put in the URL that we're using, which I'll put on the screen again, um, but try them out. So there's the get the list of hosts, ooh, sorry, uh, get the network devices, get the list of policies, and get the configured application. So these are all simple gets, give us back those information. But then we would start to think about, you know, how we could do something interesting with that in an application, right? So we'll take a look at those. So let's do devices. So make this bigger. So you can see we've got the same um, 
IP address and port for our APKM controller, same beginning to the URL, and then network device. And this is still a get, because we're just retrieving the list of those. So we'll push send. We get back a really similar structure with the array of devices, but um, we've got different attributes of this, right? So now we've got something, where is it? Network device ID. There it is, network device ID. So we're gonna, we're gonna use that one. Um, but there's lots of information about act, each actual device, right? Um, let's do policies. So this is same same idea, right? Still our controller. Now we're using poly. Still a get. Push this one. Okay. Now we've got the array of policies, and we've got the information about each policy. Cool. And we've also got applications. So configured applications, let's get the list of those. Here's our list of configured applications. So does it starting to kind of make sense, that overall pattern of how you can, how you can do that? Yeah? OK. Next, we want to do something, uh, uh, take it to the next, um, what we would want to do, which is instead of just retrieve information, we actually want to create some information or change some information. So on this one, what we're going to do is we're going to create a policy. So remember the list of policies that we got back? This time, we're going to actually create a policy. So um, this is going to be a post using the post method because we're, we're creating something. We're sending information over. And um, we're going to send JSON that tells it what policy to create. So we, we specify it back to the API saying, then this is what I want you to create. So let's take a look at that. So you'll notice it's the same URL we used as to get the list of policies, right? But this time the method is post. So the API knows we're trying to do something different than when we did the get on that same URL, right? Um, <clears throat> because we're doing a post, we need to specify um, a, a header. And we need to tell it the content type that we're going to send to you is application slash JSON so that the API knows what kind of information we're sending to it to do something with. And then this part's the new part. This is our request body. So when we did a get, we didn't send any information. But when we're doing a post, we need to say what we're going to do. So if you were looking at the APKM API docs, you would find an example of like, here's an example of what you send in the request to create a policy. And then you can modify it to, to do what you need to do. The basic things are we're going to say if the action is deny. So we're, we're basically blocking some ports in this policy. We're going to give it a policy name, policy owner. This is where we specify the host that we want the policy to act on. And then we have a, a port range in the, in the protocol. So we're going to um, do this. Yeah. I was just wondering, is it any different if you were editing um, that same policy? So let's say you created that. We're going to do that next. OK. So, <laughs> um, all right. So let me get a host that's actually real. Let's see. Try this one. Oh, oh, oh here we go. OK. So um, we're going to, this is a host that we got out of our list when we did get host. And we're going to block this, these ports, we're going to send, and we got back, this is the ID of the policy that was created. So now we've got that ID, we could do something further with it if we want to. And we got back the message saying, yeah, it worked, and we got back status of 201 created. So we know, hey, we were, we were successful, that worked. That information was there, now if you tried to you know, use those ports on that host, you, it would, they would be blocked. And we actually accidentally did that in a demo the other day and kind of broke our system. So it was <laughs> um, pretty cool. Um, if, if we try to do this again, like, so a policy has to be a unique combination of the, the host and the ports and the name. So if we just did this again, um, we're going to get a different result, which is we get a, a status code of 403 nine conflict and then we get information back saying hey um, this already exists you can't create this policy again 
does that make sense? Because you might run into that if you're working along. You need to, to change the ports. Be sure and use high ports like above 40,000 or something for our demo. <clears throat> so that's, that's the basic idea with, with creating one. Um, to modify one, like you were saying, um, it's the similar idea except you use the put method, saying I'm gonna, I'm gonna modify this using the put method. And then there's JSON that you pass in, and one of the parts of that is the policy ID. So you're saying I'm gonna modify this particular policy ID and apply these attributes to it. What's the best way to find out um the, the structure that you should be using? Is it the SDKs or it's, is it? It would be in the, the documentation for the API, yeah, okay. which, which could be part of the SDK or the, the, when this is released, it'll be you know available on developer.cisco.com. You can go and always see the, the latest docs for this API. Um, and you can see them in the, if you do the, the learning labs, the APIC EM learning lab, we've got a local copy of like kind of the, the pre version of the docs that exist right now. You can take a look at those and see them. And they've got example request and response and then they've got examples on how to use it. Um, they give you all the information you need to specify the request. So um, you may want to take a look at those docs and try some more calls in Postman on your own as you work through it. All right. <clears throat> So another little handy tool that I wanted to show you that I forgot is that, um, so sometimes when you're doing this kind of testing, you know, like you're learning how to use the, to create or modify something, you've got the docs and you're trying it out, and you've got to build up this JSON that you're going to use. Um, sometimes these can get really long and hard to tell, you know, if you have all your braces in the right place and whatever, if you're building up those strings. So there's a handy tool. Um, called JSON, JSON Lint, and um, basically it will, I know that font is tiny, let me see if I can zoom in. Nope. So you can put your JSON in, say validate, and it'll tell you if it's valid, and it'll help you find any problems that you have. And it will also, if you do something and get back like a big, nasty, unindented JSON string and you're trying to figure out what's in it, there's a handy tool you can paste it in there and it'll like pretty print it for you so it's easy to, to look at and read. So when you're testing, it's, it's really handy and can save you a lot of time. It's JSON Lint. <laughs> so there's several of these. This is just one that I, I use the most, so. All right. Okay. Oh, one other thing I wanted to show in Postman is um, a lot of times when you're getting started, an easy mistake to make is if you forgot to put in the header that you need. Um, so like I'm going to get rid of our header, our content type header, and let me change this to be something different. And we're going to send it. And you can see we get back an error that's telling us, hey, the post method is not supported, which it really is, but we forgot the content type header. And so you can just, that causes problems, you get weird errors, you need to have that, con that content type header in there for a post or a put anytime when you're sending information. So that's a, that's a common one. All right, um, what's next? Question? Is this presentation on your website? Can we it's, download it's, it? It's available for download right now while you're on the DevNet Zone Wi Fi here. And yeah. I'll put the link up again at the end. It's also, the link is on those little monitors out there. Um, we'll have it on developer.cisco.com as soon as I think there's some preview release information that we kind of have to wait before we can put it publicly out there. So we'll have it up there as soon as we can. I see. Okay. Thank you. But you can definitely get it and you can also, um, my email is at the end and if you want to email me to get a copy of it, you can. 
All right. So the next thing we're going to do, that's kind of the, the overall intro. We, got, we did some gets. We got back information. We created a policy. And now what we want to take a look at is how would we do this in Python? So you can see, like, OK, let's take it out of the testing tool and, and do something real in a program with this information. So we're going to jump into the Python part of it. Um, this starts from assuming that you don't really know Python. It starts from really basic, so don't worry if you're not a Python person. If you are, bear with us with the you know beginning nature of it. Um, there's um, some; these are some links that you might want to check on later if you are trying to set up your environment and you're new to Python. All right, so we're going to make our first REST call from Python, and this is all it takes. <laughs> like that's pretty easy, huh? We're going to do our get host and get back our list of hosts. And um, the, the parts to it are we're going to use a library called request. This is a, a library that you can install. It's open source. Um, and it makes it easy for you to make REST calls in Python. So it, they, they built a lot of nice features to help you with that. And we're going to take a look at an example of that. Specify our URL, just like we did. Yeah. Quick question. Can you explain why Python is so popular and why we wouldn't be using like PHP? So what we're doing right here is we're just doing Python to run kind of as a console application. PHP, you'd be more like, you can do REST from PHP for sure, as oh. if you're building a web application and you want to build it in PHP. I mean, you can do it in anything. You can do it in C Sharp, Java. Um, but what's, you know. I mean, I read a little bit about Python, but what is it that's so special about Python other than these other languages? I mean. Just another language. <laughs> I mean, there. I don't. I'm kind of platform agnostic. I program on lots of platforms. Sure. So well, it's like pick the right tool for what you're you're doing. Um, I think Python has a lot of. It's very attractive to um, people writing the kinds of apps where they might be using these APIs APIs because it's very it's pretty quick to learn. It's pretty elegant language. It's nice for systems kind of work. I don't know, Bruno, you want to do anything? Well, I mean, I'm up for learning a new one. I'm just, yeah, just curious. It's definitely I do picking up right now, tons but, of mean, momentum. Okay. It's like, do you know Perl? Like, a lot of people like Perl, but Python's easier to learn. So you can do a lot of the same stuff, okay. kind of. So. Um, OK, so next we're going to do the call. So we're going to say, um, this is our library, request.get. That's where we're saying use the get method. Here's the URL we want to get, and that's going to return back an object that represents the response that we got. And then for this easy one, we're just going to print out that text and take a look at it. So you, all you need to do this <coughs> is some kind of text editor, whatever you like. Um, this is a little tool called PyCharm, and then there's a community edition of it that's kind of a nice Python editor, but there's lots of them. Um, so here's what we just looked at, and I put in our URL to our APKM controller. And we're going to go to our command line. And we're going to run it to Python. And here we go. Boom. Here's the JSON that we got back, that giant list of, it's not very pretty. <laughs> it's not very useful. But we did successfully make that call and, and get the information back, right? So now it's like kind of where, where do you go from there? What are the next steps? And if we, if we wanted to take this giant piece of JSON, paste it into JSON lit and pretty print it to look at it, you could, right? But there's other ways we can handle that too. So um, that's kind of the first step. The next one, and all these samples are in the download that you can get. So this is basically the same idea, but just a tiny bit further along. We're going to use um, the network device API in this one. And we're going to be using this URL like a lot of times for all of our API calls. So let's create a variable to hold it. And then we can easily build up the, the URLs that we want. So same thing. We're going to request.get. Here's the URL. We're going to get it back and print out that um, text. And this is still going to be the, the ugly, hard to read text. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this one, I'll skip ahead so we don't have to look at the ugly stuff again. Um, this one goes one, for, one step further. So on this one, we're going to, after we get back the response object, we're going to use the, the .json method to say, I don't just want the, the text of that. 
I want like a JSON object that I can manipulate and do stuff with. So I'm going to get that object back. And then for this one, all we're going to do is we're actually going to dump it out, but we're going to use a method where we can kind of pretty print it and have it indented. So this one looks better, but it's still not all the way where we want to go. But this one would be better if you were trying to troubleshoot and see the JSON. Um, let's see, learning. So this one, a little bit easier to tell what's going on because we were able to do that, right? But that's still not really the interesting thing that we want to do. What we actually want to do is we want to get information out of that JSON and do something with it. Like we want the ID or the name or the type or something, right? So we have to, we have to be able to read specific things out of the JSON, not just print the string. So this one goes, that, goes to that next level. Starts off exactly the same way. Do the get, get the response, get the JSON, and then this part's new. This part we're saying, I'm gonna create a variable that's gonna reference that. Remember the very top level element that we got back in the JSON called response? So we're getting like a reference to that. And then we're saying, I'm gonna loop through all the items in that array basically and um, print out the item and I wanna look at the network device ID attribute of that. So this one is a little more useful. We're gonna get a, just, just a list of all the IDs for the devices on our network. So, dun, dun, dun. I think this one is step two. Boom. So that one, we now we have, we pulled out all those IDs and, and, put, and put them out. So you can imagine maybe, maybe in a fancier situation, you take those and those are displayed on a web page. And now people can select those devices and do something with them or find out more information about them or something like that. Does that make sense? Yeah? Really? Because that's kind of like, that's it. That's, that's the whole thing. The, on other languages, it's the same thing. Find a library to help you make a, requ a request to a REST API. Get back the information and use whatever library in that language is the easiest to do the JSON parsing. And you can usually find those out pretty easily. Questions? That is saw one. No? Did you have one? You want to see the code again? Just the original JSON, just see where oh, the, the registered um, attribute was. Got it, got it. Okay, so devices. So what we were looking for is this network device ID, is what we pulled out of the JSON for each one. And you were just um, matching on the response. Mm -hmm. That's right, initially. matching it. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So what time is it? Oh man, I gotta finish. Um, okay, so I'm gonna speed up a little bit. That's the main idea. Um, the next thing we wanna do actually is take a look at how do we do the post. So this is where we created the policy, okay? This one is a little bit, we're gonna do a couple things. We're gonna get the list of policies and, and see how many there are. Then we're gonna add a new one, get the list again so we can tell, hey, there's, there's one more now, right? So we're gonna do the same, the same thing there. Um, so this one puts together a couple of things. One, we're gonna get the list of hosts, and then we're gonna get a specific host out of that array. I'm just picking three. If you were writing a real program, you'd probably have the user choose it, right? But I'm just keeping it simple for demo. And then that's gonna print out, tell us that was our host we selected. And then we're gonna get a list of policies print those out the same way we just did with the network devices, but we're gonna show the policy ID. And then we're gonna count how many are in that array so we know how many we had. But here's the really new part. So now we wanna make that post. We wanna do the post to create a new policy. So one, we have to define our JSON that we're gonna send. So basically I've just picked what I'm defining and then I'm plugging in that selected host variable so that it'll be one of the hosts from the list. 
create your headers. And then here's where we make the, the call to the API. So it's same request library dot post this time, because we want to make a post. Send in the URL, send in the JSON for the request body, send in the headers. So you can see it's all the same pieces we had in Postman, right? The request body, the headers, the URL, and if you had authentication, you would put that information in too. And then we're gonna and then we're gonna run it. So let's take a look at that one. Um, you can see um, here's where it started we got our this is the host we selected from the list here's the current list of policies there were 27 here's our result which we were able to successfully create it and then now here's our list and now there's there's 28 so we really did create one right and so those are kind of all the basic building blocks and you can keep putting those together you can build more and more complicated stuff, but it all kind of goes back to those basic concepts. <clears throat> okay, let's see. Um, so like I said, all these are available for download. You can get to them. And the last thing I want to do is I just want to give a quick view into the next UI toolkit. So we're going to switch gears. We did all that great Python stuff. You're going to have all the samples. You can take it off and play with it. I'm going to be around most of the day. You can find me over in like the, the lounge area or around the learning labs if you've got questions and want to try something out. But I want to show you this because this, this is another cool piece and it kind of shows something else you can do with the APIs. So the next UI toolkit <clears throat> has a lot of things in it, but the, the, one of the coolest things is it makes it really easy for you to build a web application to display and visualize network topologies. So it's a JavaScript library you can include that makes it like where you can get your topology and like, boom, show like this really cool drawing of your network. And it's something Cisco's working on. It's, this is the first time we've shown it. Um, we would love to get your feedback if it's something that you want us you know, to keep going with. Um, it's pretty cool. So we're going to do a quick, a quick look at that. So here's an example of what you can do. Um, basically, so we're switching to JavaScript now. So switch your brain over to JavaScript from Python, okay? Um, basically, you can give it a set of data representing the nodes on the network, and then it creates diagrams like this that show you like the, the topology. And there's lots of different things you can set about how it's displayed. There's all kinds of themes and icons and all kinds of cool stuff you can do. I'm running short on time, so I'm just gonna give you a really quick um, demo of that. All right, so here is some data that we're going to pass to it. So nodes, there's an array of nodes that has like their ID and their coordinates and their name, and then links that say how those nodes are linked together, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take that and <clears throat> we're going to include all of the JavaScript and CSS files that go with Next. We're going to include that data. We're going to set up a new topology in Next, and we're going to give it that data. And that's basically it. This is like really short, right? Not a lot of code. And then we're going to open it in our browser. Boom. There's our thing. And it's cool. You've got, it's already built in where you can like pan around. You can zoom. You can change the name of these just by changing the data. There's a lot of different configuration options. So that's cool, but even cooler is if we can do the same thing, but we're going to get our data from APIC-EM instead. So we're going to make a call to say, hey, I want the physical topology from my APIC-EM API, and I'm going to feed that into that same visualization, right? So this is um, making a REST call in, in, in jQuery, and um, 
tons of information about this out on the web. You can totally find it. Happy to go over it with you also. Basically, we get back that data and we're going to put it into that same call where we create a topology. And here it goes. Room. So this one's big. We've got lots of lots of nodes on it, right, compared to the simple one. And it's very zoomed out. But if we zoom in, we start to get more detail. You can move them around. You can also click, and you can see this is all the information. Remember when we did the network device ID and got back all those attributes? This is like the same thing, and it's automatically fed in and displayed into this diagram. So this is a huge time saver. Like if you wrote all this JavaScript yourself, you'd be writing it for a long time. Yeah. Can you show that uh, API call again? It was a little bit different than yeah. physical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do want to show it. I'm actually going to show it in Postman really quick. Um, so it's um, topology slash physical, and it's just a get. So same thing we've been doing on all the other ones. And we're going to do send. And you see, remember when we looked at the static data that we used to make the little first diagram? And there were nodes and links that, came, that were in that data. This has the same structure. Basically, you get back that array of nodes, but it's got a lot more information in it than we specified in our little static one. And then it's also, if we go down far enough, which there's a lot of things on this test network. Um, you can see there, there's the links section, which says how the nodes are linked together. So we can make that call, we can get that, and we can feed it into that next UI toolkit and start to build really interesting, useful, you know, network kind of applications that allow people to select nodes, operate on, visual, visualize them, things like that. So that's, that's a fun thing to play with. There's a learning lab on the next stuff where you can kind of play with that and go through a lot of that yourself. So go check out the learning lab on that if you want, if you want more. <clears throat> There's also ability to overlay it onto an actual map. You can give it like latitude and longitude and, and do map overlays with it. So last thing slide, this is a bunch of the references that were used throughout it and might be handy to you. And um, last thing is my favorite quote, which is those who never fail are those who never try. And that's a great quote for learning to program because there's tons of trial and error, right? So don't get frustrated, keep trying. Double check your spelling, you know, all that stuff. Um, <laughs> um, so there's my contact information. You can find me on Twitter, at Mandy Whaley. You can email me directly if you need information. Um, love to hear about your experiences at DevNet. Love to hear about your experiences using developercisco.com and what you need from Cisco to help you be a successful developer, because we're here to help with that. So thanks a lot. I'll see you guys around. <laughs>